At last! We found her! Searsha! Run! Those stories that Mum told me, they're all true. Are you really a... Selkie? Uh, morning, Tom and David. Delighted to see you. Thanks for joining us today. Um, congratulations on Song and Sea. It's a brilliantly beautiful film. One of the best Irish films I've seen in years. So maybe, David, do you want to start and tell us a little bit about your character, Ben, and where he fits into the story? Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, Ben is kind of the unlikely hero of the story, and his, basically, uh, he's taken away from his home in the lighthouse by his granny, and he goes with his sister, who he doesn't really like, because... Uh, the father kind of ignores him and puts all his attention on Saoirse and his mother was lost at sea a few years ago so he's terrified of the ocean. That kind of comes into the story and uh, so basically it's about how he tries to escape from his awful granny's house and go back to his home in the lighthouse and back to his dog and it's this great story of kind of what they encounter on the way and um, it's really really beautiful animation. And Tom, I suppose that's down to you and your team, the beautiful animation. How do you pick a project like Song of the Sea because you know you're going to dedicate years of your life to it? Yeah, I mean, I knew I, this was the film I wanted to do after Secret of Kells. I had the idea for during Secret of Kells, and um, I knew we wanted to apply everything we'd learnt on the first feature film onto this. And so it was just something that was on the slow, slow boil all, all through the production of the first film. And then as we got ramped up to go into production, I started stuffing it full of people and things that I loved. You know, I based the main character on my own son and we managed to get all the actors that we wanted. So it just kept on growing and becoming something Except more. Ben. Except for the Except Ben. Except for the Except Ben. Except for We had to just put up with yeah. We just had to put up with whoever we got on the day. And <laughs> David was hang hang happened to be hanging around. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. That's, that's awful for you. But um, in terms of picking the vocal cast, as you said, you know, it's based on real life. You have ideas, I'm sure, of who you yeah. would like in each part. I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the cast were either based on family members like Bruno was my mum's name and so I was thinking of my own mum and so it was amazing I, my mum was very flattered at Lisa Hannigan you know but you must be delighted with the response that it's getting obviously uh, I saw one of the uh, the writers will tweeting about you know Empire five oh, yeah. stars uh, you know getting a lot of love from across Europe and then of course Oscars as well how was that as a, as a trip obviously it's quite an experience it's something uh, that us normal people uh, can only imagine but how was that I wasn't really meant to go until the I day know. before and then <laughs> Paul was just like oh yeah David I just got you these chickens and I was like <laughs> yeah that's great so you so had to get like a, a tux really, sorted everything yeah just literally had to run into this place and get a tux really quickly and um, and then it was the next day and I was totally mad and in terms of the people that you met there you know uh, you know was there anybody you particularly wanted to talk to or anyone you were massively starstruck by for me it was a uh, I was 11 when the Batman movie came out in 1989, so meeting Michael Keaton was a bit of a kick, you know. I was delighted to discover I'm the same height as him. I spent my whole life thinking I was small, but I'm the same height as Batman, so. Those famous Oscar bags as well, did you get all those goodie bags and no? No, I don't no. know what that, where that legend comes from. Maybe it's for the really super famous people or something that they get them. In terms of growing up, you mentioned there, you know, films like Batman. From an animated point of view, you know, have you, you know, there's one perfect animated film out there that you absolutely love or you watch repeatedly? There's a couple, but the one that was really a touchstone for me for this is My Neighbour Totoro by Hayao Miyazaki. That, uh, it's a Japanese film. I didn't see it as a kid. I wish I'd seen it as a kid. I discovered it as an adult. And uh, for me, that was really the same kind of spirit that we wanted for Song of the Sea. And finally, one last question. Would you rather fight one horse-sized duck or would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses? Oh, 100 duck-sized horses sounds brilliant. <laughs> Straight away. Just that actually sounds brilliant. But like a horse-sized duck is just gross. That would kind of be <laughs> It's not about it. the beauty is within. That's what it is. <laughs> but you'd rather fight the smaller ones anyway. No, because that's actually they awful. Make, make imagine friends little horses. With them. Oh, it'd be easy to defeat, but you could be friends <laughs> with them. There's an idea then, for imagine, you. imagine going going to school on a duck. You know, if well, you, you could really befriended it. Catch it, tame it, and then <laughs> like, <laughs> imagine like you know, like in those movies where you know they go on the horse and they're like, whoa, it could be like that with a duck. That's your idea for your next film. <laughs> well, listen, congratulations on Song of the Sea, and uh, best of luck with it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>